That's the one that's going around Twitter right now. But the person who put it up copied our chart, but he used, I think, an, 12, an eight week or 10, no, eight week lead. We think the best fit is the 12 week lead. Now, who knows who's right in this, right? You know, this is where fitting patterns and hoping it works. But generally speaking, for me, this is a rerun of 2017. It's very similar. This surge can be attributed to several key factors, as Bitcoin has been on a remarkable rally recently, trading above $997,000, which marks an all-time high. A expanding institutional investment appetite, a strengthening U.S. dollar, and concerns about liquidity. Despite the excitement surrounding Bitcoin's price, renowned economist Russ Paul has cautioned that a significant correction could be looming in an interview with Rand as the increasing adoption of Bitcoin by mainstream financial players is further driving its value upward. Many are speculating that this bullish momentum will continue, with Bitcoin potentially reaching even higher levels in the near future. Near Power anticipated a sudden shift in momentum that could surprise many traders, despite the fact that Bitcoin's upward trajectory is robust. He believes that market volatility and regulatory changes could trigger this shift. Bitcoin achieved a new historical milestone at 96,000, signifying its second best month of 2024 with a gain of over 37%. Some, such as Friend, are cautiously supporting this view, despite the fact that this impressive performance has prompted many to speculate about potential future gains. According to economist Carl Manager, the present surge in Bitcoin is only the beginning. A chart posted on X, also emphasized bullish signals on the Monthly Relative Strength Index, RSI, indicating that the longer-term prognosis for Bitcoin remains positive, despite the possibility of a pullback. To gain a deeper understanding of Raul Pal's conversation, we recommend watching clips from the interview. To remain informed about the most recent financial and cryptocurrency content, including this video, please subscribe to our channel and enable post notifications. We appreciate your continued participation. Appreciate the video. And that peaked out end of deck, fell 35% in Jan um, for you know like three weeks and then rallied. So your hypothesis, I think, is right. I actually think it probably gets to the kind of 110, 121st. But you know, it's it's pretty 50-50 which chart works. But really what it's saying is. Liquidity, because of the dollar going up ahead of the election, because of rates going up ahead of the election and the fears about Trump and fears about um, um, tariffs and stuff like that, that what was causing that issue and that does lead crypto price. Yeah, firstly, 2016 Trump, exactly the same happened. The dollar went up and rates went up. January, they all reversed. And they continued down all of that period. So, yeah, so we need to go back to 2016. That's over here. So there you go. Right. So what happened is 2016, we had that spike. Uh, then it came back down for the, the rest of 16 and then eventually spiked uh, later from 18 onwards. So, you know, that was a perfect, very similar kind of setup. Not identical looking, but same idea. Scott Besson, somebody I've known for 20 years, um, you know, um, he was a macro hedge fund guy. You know, he's been to my house in Spain, that kind of stuff. You know, I've known him for a long time. Scott gets the picture. And if he wants to stimulate growth, which is what he said, he said, you know, the most important thing to try and pay this debt cycle off is to increase growth. And then he talked about a weaker dollar. And he's talked about lower rates. And he's talked about lower oil. All of those things say he wants um, looser financial conditions. So if that's the case, that's good for us and our bags. They need to get growth up, right? That's thing number one, because they can't tighten um, fiscal policy by reducing the deficits and stuff until they've got growth going, because that will slow it down otherwise. So they need to get rates lower. Now, obviously, the Federal Reserve is supposed to be independent, but they're going to try and force something to get liquidity and growth up. If you think of the ISM survey, which is the business cycle, still below 50, which says the economy is not really growing very strongly. Um, the services sector is growing a bit better. The manufacturing is not growing at all. So they're going to have to goose that for a bit. A weaker dollar, lower rates, 
uh, injecting some liquidity into the system, then it's going to take time to negotiate tariffs and, and what the outcomes are. You know, the Europeans are already going, well, you know, maybe we'll play ball with you a bit more. And the Mexicans have done the same. So, you know, I think we've got that. Also, I think Trump, one of the first things he will do in the first three months is try and resolve Israel, which we saw the... Um, um, Hezbollah, the Hezbollah is already resolved, yeah. Hezbollah, Lebanon is yeah. already resolved. So it's only, it's only Hamas and Iran that's, Iran that's basically left. Yeah, and I think my view has always been Iran in the background has been agreeing to, to whatever's been going on. Um, also, um, I think Putin and Ukraine will get resolved. So a lot of the dollar premium, risk premium comes out, oil premium comes out, oil can drop lower, the dollar can weaken just because geopolitical tensions go down. So that's what I think the first order of business is get this stuff out of the way, get things feeling better, get the economy moving, then start cutting government costs, which takes time, via deregulation first, and then via figuring out how can you save costs. Um, and then there will be a broader implementation of tariffs, but that takes, even Scott Beston said, we can't rush tariffs. It has to take time and has to be thought through. So that's more likely a 2026 thing, which is usually the back end of the cycle anyway, when liquidity is coming out. So you can see the pattern of liquidity and then liquidity coming out as they really start stripping out government spending and they really start um, tightening up on tariffs. Roel Paul believes that the price of Bitcoin will continue to rise to even greater heights before investors experience what he refers to as max pain. He anticipates that this will result in a significant correction, with prices potentially plummeting by as much as 30% in a very brief period of time. Uh, Powell suggests that history may uh, repeat itself as the volatility that followed became a defining characteristic of Bitcoin's price action, and it draws parallels to Bitcoin's behavior in 2017, when the market experienced similar explosive growth, followed by a sudden and severe pullback. The file. Regulatory landscape is one of the most significant factors influencing the future of Bitcoin. Government regulations are instrumental in molding market sentiment, and any modifications to Bitcoin's legal status or taxation could have a profound impact on its price trajectory. Investor confidence may be enhanced by regulatory clarity, particularly in significant markets such as the United States and Europe, and noted by a friend. This could potentially drive the price even higher by encouraging more institutional participants to enter the market and providing clearer guidelines on the legal framework and tax treatment of Bitcoin. Let's observe additional clips from the interview. Right, so, so generally speaking, it tends to be explosive coming out, the banana zone, right? And I kind of set people up for the banana zone, and here we are in the banana zone. Um, so the question is... So we're is, in the banana is, zone. So, so we're in, you're wait, saying we're firmly well, in the banana chart. zone. How could it not be bananas, okay. right? 50% in a month. Yeah. How big are the, um, banana, how big are the bananas in the Cayman? Because that's quite a big banana. Okay. They're not very big here, but um, yeah. we're not far from a lot of big banana plantations in different islands. But um, so that's a decent sized banana, but that's the start, right? Because generally speaking, the post-election year or what we would call crypto fall or crypto autumn, tends to be very strong. So it tends to be very strong. The macro backdrop is obviously very good because of deregulation, new government, all of that stuff. So we've got a good setup. It's gone far and fast. I think everyone's a bit PTSD'd still, so, which is why I err towards the, the, it probably has one more squeeze because so many people think it needs it the correction now. Um, but, you know, I hear your point of view, too. So I'm not, you know, saying it has to be one or the other, but that's my view. It goes up first. Everyone thinks, oh, it's fine. We're at 110. We're getting 150 now. And then it corrects in everybody's faces quite sharply. Um, so you're saying, Max Payne, oh. you're saying Max Payne is another leg up. That's what you're basically saying. Max Payne, yeah. is, Max Payne is, is, is sending this thing one leg higher. Yeah, one leg higher in kind of disbelief and then kind of, trapping a bunch of new entrants in, and then it does the typical 30% correction in a week and a half. And everyone's like, holy shit, what is this thing I've bought? You know, why did my friend at Thanksgiving tell my, you know, cousin at Thanksgiving tell me to buy this? It's gone down 30%. You know, we've got to go through that sort of stuff. Then normally it should rally 
all the way through till US tax season. Which is April. So that's, that, that, that's April. Yeah, it's the March-April period. It usually is extremely strong going into that. And then if it's very strong, then you have a very big correction because everyone needs to pay some taxes. So, and then normally what happens is it corrects again. So you can see it there in 2020, uh, 2021. It then had a 50% correction that time. And yes, I'll come on to that in a sec. And then, and then it rallies into year end. I think we're closer to a 2017 analogy, which was a much stronger back end of the year. I think people have real PTSD from last time. And I was actually going through this morning, you know, what was the key factor that caused the stunted cycle last time? It's because the speed the business cycle went up straight out of recession and um, how fast financial conditions peaked. They peaked in March of 2021 and the market essentially peaked there with the second attempt at rally. Um, 2017 peaked way towards the end of the year. So it was just the weird setup of the post-COVID, you know, inject all the liquidity, then, oh my God, we need to withdraw it. That setup, I think, caused that that cycle, while 2017 and 2013 were, were more similar. Okay, and... So that, means, so that means a correction over the summer and then a, a, a big rally into year-end. Okay. You know, go back to the longer version of that. Because the... right, everyone shows this and goes, oh my God, it's awful. That is a big kind of wedgy pattern it doesn't look catastrophic right it's been kind of sideways range yes but my guess is same way as you that eth probably outperforms and the reason being is you're just going to deregulate this thing and if you are a financial institution you will tend to build on eth or eth layer twos and the reason being it's like ibm or microsoft it's a broad de- ecosystem. You don't get fired for doing it. I don't disagree. There's that weird psychology that goes on. It's also, I think, you know, there, there is going to be fundamental flows behind it as well. I think they ETH overbuilt capacity or block space for where we are currently in the market because of the layer twos. But over time, I think we'll use that block space up because I think the institutions will use Raul Paul believes that the price of Bitcoin will continue to rise to even greater heights before investors experience what he refers to as max pain. He anticipates that this will result in a significant correction, with prices potentially plummeting by as much as 30% in a very brief period of time. Uh, Powell suggests that history may uh, repeat itself as the volatility that followed became a defining characteristic of Bitcoin's price action, and it draws parallels to Bitcoin's behavior in 2017, when the market experienced similar explosive growth, followed by a sudden and severe pullback. The file. Regulatory landscape is one of the most significant factors influencing the future of Bitcoin. Government regulations are instrumental in molding market sentiment, and any modifications to Bitcoin's legal status or taxation could have a profound impact on its price trajectory. Investor confidence may be enhanced by regulatory clarity, particularly in significant markets such as the United States and Europe, and noted by a friend. This could potentially drive the price even higher by encouraging more institutional participants to enter the market and providing clearer guidelines on the legal framework and tax treatment of Bitcoin. Let's observe additional clips from the interview.